what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overlord here we're going to be talking about several different horror topics in this video here today we'll be talking about chucky season four we'll be talking about jurassic world four we'll be talking about terrifier three we'll be talking about ready or not two and we'll be talking about scream seven now or scream six and seven i guess i should say this is from bloody disgusting an article from bloody disgusting starting off with chucky where don mancini gave an update on chucky season four this was him speaking with the direct who reported this as an exclusive mancini makes it clear that chucky season four has not yet been ordered by usa or sci-fi but he's hopeful and excited about the idea he's already conjured up mancini says there's very little i can say about that i can't tell you my idea for season four but i'm really excited about it I already pitched it to the network, so fingers crossed because it's something I'd really like to do. I think it's really fun, new, and again, another left turn in terms of what we've been doing so far. We don't know the status of the show yet, so again, fingers crossed that we'll get picked up, right? Now, I'm going to continue to be honest about this show. I find it entertaining, and it's not hard for me to watch because that's how much I just love Chucky. However, I can't say that I'm excited about what season four will do in terms of left turns just because of the drastic left turns and swings that happen in this finale of season three and where they leave the trio at i trust it would be resolved but it shouldn't have been written into the story to begin with you'll see what i mean very soon when the finale airs and it's just that certain writing decisions with this show they are starting to become like okay you're writing things for shock value you're going to obviously undo certain things so why do them to begin with when you could have just kept things a lot more simplistic if you wanted to shock us well, whatever it'll all make sense when the finale years jumping into jurassic world 4 we have some updates on jurassic world 4 from daniel rpk the movie will have at least six leads three adults and three teens the main lead is female obviously that's got to be scarlett johansson who is in talks uh for the male lead chris evans chris hemsworth and glenn powell all passed nicholas holt has the current offer but since he's going to film superman for more for many more months it's unlikely that he will accept dev patel is in talks for the third lead the teens are two sisters and the older sister's boyfriend there is a male villain that they are looking to cast soon as well they are also looking to cast multiple supporting roles of people who visit the island now i will say check out monkey man if you haven't already because patel really impressed me there so i'd be down to see him in the jurassic park movie like I stated numerous times in the past, if this movie can lean into those horror roots from that original film, I think it'll be one of the better entries depending on execution. They, they seemingly have a lot of the correct ingredients many people would want to see a part of a good Jurassic Park movie, and 9 out of 10, it's going to be better than Dominion. I don't see how this can be worse than Dominion. Just literally, I don't see how dominion or jurassic park 3 some days i would even argue that jurassic world dominion is worse than jurassic park 3 i'll have to do a rewatch soon just to kind of come to a final conclusion on if i think dominion is actually worse than 3 or not jumping into terrifier 3 bloody disgusting also gave us this update on terrifier 3 today the return of art the clown is getting closer and closer bloody disgusting can announce this morning that filming has officially wrapped on damien leone's upcoming terrifier 3 Previously, they also let us know about a role related to Santa Claus. It says, Daniel Roebuck has been cast as Santa Claus in Terrifier 3. Bloody Disgusting can exclusively report. Daniel, I guess, said, I've been holding this secret for a long time. I've been really excited about it. I'm actually entering into, into the movies that I watch. It's extraordinary. This is Terrifier. Bigger, badder, best. So, hopefully all is well with him. I know they started teasing this role online i think it was saturday or friday and many people were thinking that this would be jamie lee curtis or something like that and then i saw a lot of people disappointed that it was this person but whatever that's who's playing santa claus and filming has wrapped on art the clown's latest run of shenanigans so we'll be seeing him later this year jumping into ready or not 2 so ready or not 2 i know was reported as being in the works by the in snyder jeff snyder someone who has been reliable in the past on a lot of things not all the time but he's been quite reliable i don't really want to shoot someone down as being unreliable just because they get one thing wrong if you have several things that are right obviously you're trying to be correct and reliable you're not trying to be somebody who's just spreading misinformation for the sake of spreading misinformation so now we have a confirmation on ready or not to from radio silence themselves matt and tyler both spoke with entertainment weekly and gave this comment I don't think we knew after making it that there would be so much story left to tell. This was Gillette. We're so proud of what that first movie is. We're so proud of what the sequel is. We're just really excited and fingers crossed that it gets made. So it's in the works. They called the script a banger, I believe. And 
this is what Ben no Ben Nelly Open said. He's adding with Searchlight and Samara, they're not gonna let it down. So we have the confirmation that Samara Weaving, as Snyder reported, is also being a part or is going to be a part of this sequel if it happens. Hopefully everything goes well with Ready or Not 2 and hopefully they don't have any hiccups that stop them from getting this made other than of course the potential IOTC strike or some other unforeseen things that could happen down the road. Granted, I haven't heard really any updates on the IOTC strike happening or not. Last thing we're gonna talk about is Scream 7. So we're gonna be talking about Melissa Barrera and her comments on where Sam was left in Scream 6. She shared this with Collider. She said, I feel like the ending of Scream 6 was a very good ending, and so I don't feel like, ugh, I got left in the middle. No, I think people, the fans, were wanting a third movie to continue that arc, and apparently the plan was a trilogy, even though I was only contracted for two movies. So I did my two movies, and I'm fine. I'm good with that. I got two. That's more than most people will get. Now, there is more to this quote. That's just the most important bit to me as it pertains to what I'm going to talk about next. I've seen this quote spread online. Some people are reading this and jumping to the conclusion that she must not have been contracted for Scream 7. How does that make sense that she couldn't have been contracted when we're being told she was fired? And I believe there was a report numerous times that came out saying she had signed a new deal. So they terminated said deal because of the misunderstandings that they had and the way they were painting her to be saying certain things and marking them as one thing when it really wasn't like that if you look into her comments. So... This does not mean she didn't have a contract for Scream 7. It also does not mean that she wasn't fired. She's just saying what someone like Dave McRae has been saying. If you are not familiar with Dave McRae, please go look at some of his Scream videos as it pertains to the ending of Scream 6. Him, a lot of you, me included, all agree that the way they end Scream 6 is very conclusive for Sam right now. Yes, she was supposed to have another entry, but the fact that they left her the way that they did, I'm glad that they left her like this. It's very appropriate. It's meaningful and it really harkens back to where we saw her when we met her in Scream 5. She's deciding to leave behind that darkness. She's not going to give in to it. Her sister snaps her out of it when she asks Sam, are you coming? She decides to leave that behind and just move on with life. She's not going to let that ghost face legacy and stuff with Billy Loomis continue to just weigh on her mind. That's what her dropping the mask seemed to symbolize. Letting all of that go. Yes, we still have unresolved things with her mother and her father, who is actually, of course, Tara's dad. But I guess we could still say that's Sam's dad, too, because he raised her. But we don't really need to see that stuff resolved. It would just have been nice to see that obviously play out in Scream 7 because it was going to. No doubt it was. But we're not going to get to see that, sadly. Let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notifications so you never miss a video. In the description, I'll have links to all of my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.